Hey guys, in this video we're going to be solving a dilution problem. So pretty much it's like um, dilation or dilution of like salt and water. Um, we'll be solving this via differential equations. So let's take a look at this particular problem. So a tank that contains five liters of water, which is about ten, in which ten grams of salt have been dissolved. So what we're looking at here is this particular container here. There's salt in there, and it's five liters, and there's ten grams of salt that's been um, mixed in with that. Okay. Um, a salt solution containing 4 grams per litre is poured into the tank at a rate of 2 litres per minute. So 4 grams per litre is poured in at 2 litres per minute here. And um, the mixture is kept uniform, um, uniform, uniform by stirring. So it's constantly being stir uh, stirred. So we're imagining as this is going in, it's um, remaining pretty mixed. So it's not like the salt's on the bottom. It's like completely mixed. Um, the mixture leaves the tank at a rate of 2 litres per minute. Set up a differential equation for the amount of salt Q grams in the tank at a time T minutes. Okay, so when we have a question like this, it's always good to label what we have. So what we're looking for is pretty much a change in, so we're setting up for a differential equation. So we're looking for a change in pretty much the amount of salt. So in other words, we're looking for um, a DQ because they've labeled Q as salt. So Q is our, it's pretty much our salt in the mixture, okay? And T is time in this case, um, in minutes. So T is time in minutes. And um, what we're looking for is pretty much a D. We're looking for a function of Q with respect to like T or something. Okay. Now the way we set up this problem is we take a look at the rate of change. Okay. So this differential equation is going to follow this rule. So the rate in, like, so the change in salt with respect to time is pretty much going to be the inflow, so the amount of flow going into the container, minus the outflow, okay? Now, this has to be in a particular unit here. This has to be um, grams over minutes, okay? What we have here is we have two different quantities up here. So we have grams per liter and liters per minute. Now, if you multiply those two together, you'll actually get grams per minute. So let's take a look at this. So our inflow in this particular question here, the inflow, is going to be 4 times 2, because if you multiply the 4 times 2, so you have 4 grams, oh, whoops, that's 2. If you have 4 grams per um, litre going in, if you multiply that by the litres per minute, so 2 litres per minute, you can see the units actually cancel out. And what we're left with is 8 grams per minute, okay? So this is our inflow, okay? So this here is our inflow of our problem, okay? Now, how do we work out our outflow? Now, this thing has to be in terms of like concentration. So, let's take a look here. So, we don't know how much salt is going out. So, we have Q. Now, what's concentration? Concentration is the mass over the volume, isn't it? Okay. So, the reason we're looking for concentration here is because we're looking for like a grams per liter. Because here we have a liters, um, a liters per minute. So in order to find out a grams per minute, you need the liters per minute, which we've been given here, and we need to work out the grams per liter. So we don't know what the mass is, so we say our concentration of the um, outflow is just Q. So it's like the amount of salt that's coming out, which we don't know, over the volume. Now, if we take a look at the volume, is the volume changing? Is the net volume changing at all? Because if 2 litres is going in here and 2 litres are going out, the volume is going to remain 5 litres. This amount of like mixture in here will always be 5 litres. So in this case, our volume is fixed. So our volume will be 5. Okay, so this is our concentration. So pretty much this is the amount of grams leaving per litre. Okay, now if you multiply that by 2 litres per minute, it's going to give you basically your grams per minute. So your outflow, so the outflow we're going to label, we'll highlight, let's use orange in this case. The outflow is going to be this multiplied by 2. So our outflow is 2Q over 5, okay? So our differential equation is just going to be, so dQ over dt is going to be 8 minus... 2q over 5. Okay? So, that's the first part. We've set up a differential equation. Okay? 
Now, what else have we been told? So, it goes in at five, li five liters of water, which 10 grams of salt has been dissolved. Okay, so we've also been told, so 10 grams of salt has been dissolved. So, that means the, this is the amount of salt in the tank. This is the rate of change of salt with time. So, what we've been told there when it has 10 grams of salt has been dissolved, we know that Q is going to be 10 grams when time equals zero. So that's just another bit of information we need to keep in our pocket for a bit. So that's question A done. Solve the differential equation and determine Q at time T. Okay, so we're just going to solve this differential equation. Now, before we can do this, we've just basically got our... We're going to use a separation of variables. So just to make it easier, we're going to move this 8 on top of here. So we're going to make it have a common denominator. So if we multiply 8 by 5, we're going to have 40 over 5. And now because of our... Now they have common denominators, we can add those two together. So, or let's subtract those two, I should say. So dq over dt is going to be equal to 40 minus 2q over 5, okay? So this is our differential equation. Now the reason I did this is so that separation of variables is going to be easier. Because you can see, if we were to integrate this right now, we're not meant to because... If we were to integrate this right now, we'd have to integrate this with respect to time. But the variable we have on this side is q. So what we actually need to do is we're actually just physically going to swap this. Oh, whoops, that's a, not a highlighter. What we're physically going to swap is this and this. So what, in other words, what we're doing is we're dividing by 40 minus 2q and we're timesing by dt. So what we're left with is basically, all right, dq, 40 minus 2q is equal to dt over 5. Okay, so we've just done separation of variables. So what we can do now is, well, to make this easier, this one's going to be a bit interesting to a different, uh, integrate because of the u sub. So what we can do to make that even easier is we can take it a factor of 2 up here. So we can have dq over dt. So the reason I'm doing this is that way I don't have to do like a u sub or anything. So I can take a factor of 2, so 20 minus q over 5. Then do the same thing we did before. So we have dq over 2 over 20 minus q is equal to 2 over 5 dt. Uh, whoops, that's meant to be over there, sorry. Alright, and then we integrate both sides with respect to their variables. So this here is going to be a log, but it's going to be negative log because of the negative sign here. So negative natural log of the absolute value of 20 minus Q plus C. Okay. Integrate this side. It's just going to be 2 over 5 T plus C. Okay. Now, if you have plus C on this side and plus C on that side, they aren't necessarily the plus C. So if you want to move them all to one side, that's going to make things easier. So if I minus this plus C, this isn't necessarily the same plus C over here. So when we minus plus C over here, it doesn't cancel. It's just another constant that we're not sure about. So what we're left with is natural log of 20 minus Q. Oh, oops. Make that straight line. Is equal to 2 over 5T plus C. Now this C now is different to this C up here. Because this here, let's say this is C1 and this is C2. This is like C3 now, where C3 is C1 minus C2, okay? Alright, so we want to get Q as pretty much the subject, okay? So what we're going to do here is, alright, we can find what this plus C is because we got given this other bit of information. We got told that when T equals 0, there's 10 grams in there, okay? Because at the start, before we even start pouring, we get told, alright, in the 5 litres of water, there's 10 grams of salt. That means when T equals 0, there's some 10 grams. So in other words, when t equals 0, q is 10. So if we substitute that information into here, we can put, alright, this 10 can go here, and then where does this t go? This one would go, this 0 would go here. So in other words, we get, pretty much we know what um, c is straight away. So we get negative log of 20 minus 10 is equal to um, c, okay? So, what's this going to be? So, natural log of, alright, 20 minus 10, that's just going to be 10. So, C is pretty much negative um, log 10, okay? Now, what we can do here is pretty much say, alright, since this is just some constant, we can just divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and it's still just going to be another constant, isn't it? Okay? Alright, so that's a much easier plus C rather than having a negative log. So, what we can do here now is pretty much, alright, we can put this information into our equation up here. So, 
reason we're going to do that is it will make things a lot um, easier to take a look at, okay? So let's see what what's on the next oh, thing we should do. Oh, we're not done answering this question, are we? No, we're not. Okay, so we've done that. We can put that up here if we wanted to. So we'd have, all right, what would we have? We have negative log of 20 minus Q is equal to 2 over 5T plus log of 10. Okay? Righto. So what we can do in this case here, if we really wanted to, is oh we could always all right, we could keep this as negative one a uh, negative log 10 and move this to the other side so the reason we're doing that is because of our log laws so we'll have 2 over 5 t is equal to um negative log 20 minus q uh and if we move that to the other side it'll be plus log 10 yep and then by our log laws we can multiply the 10 so we have 2 over 5 t is equal to negative Oh, this technically counts as division in other case. Because, alright, because there's these log laws. So if you have log of A plus log of B, that's going to be log of A times B. And if you have log of A minus log of B, that's going to be log of A divided by B. So what we have here is we've got this second log law here. So in other words, this is going to be the natural log of 10 divided by all this. So 20 minus Q. Okay. Now you're probably thinking, how are we even close to making this Q the subject of formula? Well, all we have to do now is pretty much change of like, well, we're going to switch this around, turn this exponential. So if we raise all of this, so what we're going to do is pretty much this. If you have, what was it? Log. If you have log of a of b to the x, that can be rewritten as ax to the b, a to the power of x is equal to b. Because natural log is just log base e, we can rewrite this entire thing as just, alright, this is just going to be e to the power of 2 over 5t is equal to 10 over, what are we going to say, 10 over 20 minus q. Then we can multiply onto this side, so we have 20 minus Q, and then we'll have E to the 2 over 5T is equal to 10. Distribute this, then we're going to have, alright, so we'll have 20 E to the 2 over 5T minus Q, E to the 2 over 5T is equal to 10. We're going to move this to the other side, so we'll have negative Q e to the 2 over 5 t is equal to 10 minus 20 e to the 2 over 5 t. Then we're going to divide by negative e to the 2 over 5 t because that will cancel and that will make q the subject. So we'll have negative e 2 over 5 t. So when we apply this here, we're going to have q is equal to 10 minus 20 e to the 2 over 5 t over negative e to the 2 over 5t. Now what we can do here is we can make this look a bit neater. So we can dish, we can basically apply this to here and to here. So what we're left with is pretty much, right, this will be negative 10 e to the negative 2 over 5t and this will be plus 20. Yep, just plus 20. Righto. So this is our solution to our differential equation. So q is a function of time, so the amount of salt at a time is given by this here, accounting for our initial conditions and everything, okay? Right, oh, so that was, um, which part was that? That was that one done, okay. How much salt was in the tank after five minutes, okay? What is the concentration then? Okay, so what we're doing now is taking this equation here, so let's, um, let's drag it up here. So we'll go bring this up. We'll move it to the side here and we'll answer the next part of the question. Okay, so how much salt is in the tank after five minutes? So in other words, we just substitute all right, when t is equal to five because this time's in minutes. So that means q of five is going to be negative 10 e to the negative 2 over 5 to the power of 5 
plus 20. Okay, then I'll grab my calculator. Oh, it's over here somewhere. All right, so I plug that in. So, the reason I'm plugging it into a calculator, oh, this one's flat. All right, let's get a different one. So, the reason I'm plugging this into a calculator is because I can't work out E, because E is like a, it's like a decimal number. It's like 2.71, etc. So, it's E to the power of negative 2. So, these 5s will cancel because that 5 is on the top there. So, E to the power of negative 2. Yep, brackets. Plus 20. Righto. So, this means, all right. The amount of um, concentrate, uh, the amount of salt in the container is approximately. So I'll use approximate size is 18.64 well, grams. Okay. Now the question didn't ask that. It asked for the concentration. So concentration is pretty much the. All right. It's pretty much the mass over the volume. Okay. Now the volume is just five. So it's just going to be this number, 18.64 over five. Okay. So if we divided that number by five. The concentration is approximately 3.73, okay? Righto. And then the last question, show that the salt can never exceed 20 grams, okay? So what this means here is, let's take a look at this equation here. So if we have Q of T, that's equivalent to, what was that? Um, it was 10, negative 10, e to the power of, what was it? Negative 2 over 5t. Plus 20. Alright, so imagine as t goes on forever, okay? As t goes to infinity, this term here is going to go to zero because this is a negative exponent. So as t goes to infinity, q of t, so as that goes to infinity, q of t, so the amount of salt will approach 20 grams, okay? So it will never exceed 20 grams. So the curve is going to kind of look something like this. So it will go like here and it will never pass. 20, okay, so 20 is like an asymptote, okay, because this here can be written, so negative 10 over e to the power of 2 over 5 can be written as this, so e over 2 over 5t, so as this number gets really big, this whole term gets really small, because you have a really big number divided by a small number, so it basically approaches 0, okay, and yeah, sketch the graph, the graph will look something like this, so yeah, pretty much, um, we can work out what time, so when t equals 0, if you put 0 into here, that's just going to give you negative 10 plus 20. So this here will be 0, 10. And then it'll look something like this and it will not go past 20. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please leave a thumbs up and yep, like and subscribe.